Today we're going to continue the reading on this book called uh, Analytic by Confucius. We are in Mines 415. And what is yours? Uh, we did, and mine, we did 414 last 414, time. 414, okay. So we're on 415. Okay. I think Mines 414 said this. It says, Zi yue, jun zi yu yi, xiao ren yu li. That is... Translation. I'm going to do a translation, the Hebrew translation from today on. Okay, so yeah. So Confucius said, "To a virtuous man, you can show him what is right, and he will understand. But to um, a, a, a base person, you have to tell him what is 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 going to harm him or benefit him. Then he will understand. So basically." The level of conversation with different audience had to change as we are really con convincing people or relate to people. So, what does your translation look like? Um, I guess it's actually, for me, it's 16, I suppose. I don't know why I wrote 14. Okay, it's okay. Time, it's okay. Um, it says, The master said, The mind of the superior man is conversant with righteousness. The mind of the mean man is conversant with gain. Yeah, I think that might be a better translation. Here is the word "you" in Chinese have two. Is sometimes Chinese, they like to use different words, but um, uh, it's replace another word. At the time they use it, it's for inscription on uh, again on bamboo or something mm -hmm. like that. So they might use different word to 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 replace another word, but they mean another thing. Am I right? So I think this word. You is uh, have double meaning, but uh, I like what your translation look like. Uh, the interpretation here, basically, that word is changed to be make known, make make plain to somebody. So, but the other word, according to the direct translation, of the word is actually means to, uh, to to to. To 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 make a parable, make make a make a make example, you know. So, what I have you, I think, is that they engage a conversation, basically a kind of conversation. Now you get facing uh, two kinds of people in any society or any audience. Oftentimes, you find the people they are either interested in the truth, the principle, the matter, the seeking the ideal of a thing. The other is a self personal gain, right? So you can define this, this in this context by Confucian said the first class is people want to learn virtue and they seeking virtue. The second people seeking gain, selfish selfish interest, am right? So so how you then converse with people? The first person you and then you can discuss what is really to Things of and virtues, all things of principle, the truth. The second one, you means the basic and the talk about what is, you know, the the, the the base people or the people of self interest, will talk about what those things relate to them. Am right in terms of self esteem? So making sense to you? So, um, interesting enough. So you have two different kind of com companionship or conversation going on or fellowship even. So. Now, if the word you means to make known, most likely in this case is actually like a, a garment in order to, to instruct its citizenry from the policy, the intent the policy. So that's why we do certain things. Let's, let's make sure this to be done and that not be done. Making sense to you? Now, oftentimes you're facing different audiences, you're facing good-hearted people who said, well, here's a good cause for you to subscribe to. So let's let's respect this policy and follow this policy. Am right? So making sense to you? So it's more governing principle now. Now, if the people are not virtuous people, then you have to say, well, listen, I want this policy to be executed and the goal be, 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 be done. So if we do right, there's a reward. If you do wrong, here's your punishment. Think about this, this wonderful, basically you want to 
implement a policy, and I implement a certain kind of uh, government or decree or ideals. They can send to you. Now, really to God, through Moses' law, for example, or Jesus, or through Jesus, you can see a little bit difference there, right? So, make sense to you. In Moses' law, the audience mostly are unrighteous people. People cannot get rid of their sin, right? Come with the same from nature, same from desires, unrestrained. Why when that end? Because the people rebelled, and right? Refused God direct educational Treat them as a song, treat them as a, on the righteous side. They, they have appetite, <laughs> have desire for righteousness. They actually uh, want to run away from it, am I right? They continue concerns their own gain, their own well-being, and the expense of uh, despising God, teaching God's way, God's righteous heart, am I right? Making sense to you? you know, so, therefore, God gives them a law through Moses, and the law is restricted based on their base nature, sinful nature, if you will. And when Jesus come, he all right, he kick that economy away. He released people from that bondage, right? So he set them free. He said, okay, you are not a slave to sin and death. You are a son of righteousness. I want you to learn the right of the living. We can send to you. So let me teach you the kingdom of God and this righteousness. So the dynamic changed. Is this making sense to you? So, in any civilization, not civilization, in any cultural building, you'll find the two actually and all, always departing each other. Each one actually required, especially in the world when man was born from sin, I mean, they need external discipline, they need kind of restriction, kind of community or corporate Direction, am I leadership, whatever, making sense to you? Yeah, so, any comments on this point? Oh, there's a lot that could be said about the yeah. relation between law and culture, but I, yeah. I don't want to, most of what could be said would just lead on to another related, but not very strongly uh, relevant topic yeah. concerning this particular teaching, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. Very thoughtful, right? Yeah. yeah. Think about it. That's just one sentence, but it's encompassed so much, right? So, Absolutely, yeah. 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 So let's read the next one for 16 online. My translation would be, Confucius said, you look um, and a um, godly man, you will want to be like him. And you look at an unrighteous man, you would uh, self-examine yourself, um, though you can be not like him, you know? So, it, that's amazing. So, uh, Elijah, these things making sense to you, interesting you? Yeah, I hope you hear with your heart, okay? From today, I want you to listen to things more than through your mind, but thank you in your heart. Because those are things, it's very easy to go through the mind, but it's very hard to practice. Amen? Hallelujah. We're hard to practice. Now, what does your translation look like? The Master said, When we see men of worth, we should think of equaling them. Hmm. When we see men of a contrary character, we should turn inwards and examine ourselves. Hmm. So. So this is actually in any culture, should I say. But let's narrow down biblical teaching. Especially in Paul's teaching, we see he talking about the self-examination, exam right? The word through through, Jesus talking about the sober-mindedness, being sober, you know, being prepared, sometimes he said, for his coming, for his judging things, ultimately. And uh, or judge yourself sometime, you know. So those evidently is implied here. Also, we look at that Jesus ultimate model pattern of righteous life. We said it, you will be just like him. So you're looking forward to this face in the mirror darkly, a glass darkly, but you continue to look at and gaze upon it and your glory or your likeness 
will be transformed from glory to glory. Am I so? So what is meaning there is? It's 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 interesting. You know, you have to understand in old time. Do the do people have normally have a mirror? They don't have mirror. Am I so? This reminds um, me of the proverb of yeah. uh, man. I don't remember exactly what it says. Yeah, I memorize so. it, but uh-huh. basically that men sharpen one another in a sense, like. Irish and Irish. Yeah, Irish and Irish. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, people don't have mirrors. So you think about the occasion they took when they had to go to a mirror. W- what is the occasion would be? It's not every casual occasion. They have to be what they dress like in a, in a, in a stately or in a in a proper way. Am I for proper for special occasions all the time? You know, so making sense to you. So, and. Um, in those days, speaking about when you see Jesus Christ in his uh, holy attire, glorious attire, which this soul on the mountain top, they all have an impression this is Moses will look like, this Aaron look like, this is Jesus on the mount- mountain figure look like, you know, so with the Moses Elijah. So, what do you think the disciples' mind when talking about this? The glory of Christ Jesus through the face of Christ. Am I the glory of God through the face of Christ? They were basically talking about this is the ideal life, you know. So just like we're attending a very solemn occasion and very honorable um, ceremony, you have to really dress it up, you know. So make sure nothing's missing, you know. So. Uh, you know their culture. They want everybody clean before they go to the temple, and right dressed properly. You know, so um, you can imagine they they want a mirror. You know, so if for themselves doing it, and right. So, um, so anyway, that's the that's the what it is. So, and uh, just give you a, a biblical parable, uh, a parallel with it. Or so, four seventeen. I'm sorry, I rush ahead. I want to finish some. Uh, Make some headway on this reading. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. This is something interesting. So last night, the Lord just bring to me through different writings, different readings, or in Chinese, on the same thing. I think uh, in the days to come, we might talk about it. Okay, so, and not the same thing. I'm just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow, that's unbelievable. Three sources now. Okay, talking about how to treat your parents, basically, how to honor your parents. This is 417. I want you to pay attention to this, okay? Confucius said, when you serve all wheat on your parents, if they have some shortcomings. You should uh, um, tactically and gently nudge them to change. But if your suggestion of a change or criticism, in a sense, could occur, is not welcomed, then you should continue to honor them and continue to obey them. And if you have to do this again, then do it again. And do not hold a grudge against them or your will against them. So this is what it means to be an honorable child. Even your parents is not that perfect. And right, so to deal with those difficult occasions. This is where I believe all to life. And there are other things talking about how to be a good parent. This is a part I actually want to bring to our family culture. Unfortunately, uh, there is a culture clash because I think the things when I brought up using kind of uh, material people who said it's oh it's Chinese culture, it's Western culture, and I don't think so. This is actually a biblical culture. I mean, one clear example in the Bible. What you can call, think about this this weird thing. David. David. Psalm, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, uh, with Saul, his yeah. relationship with Saul being there persecuted by him, but remaining yeah. respect to the end. There you go. A positive yeah. example. What is a, a negative 
Well, and God punished him for it. Song of uh, the third song of uh, oh Noah. <laughs> there you go. It's a hand, right? Is that a beautiful story? Uh, yeah, yeah. And God punished him for it forever. <laughs> I mean, that's a good sorry. example. Yeah, yeah. It's a great example. We can teach on these principles. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the noise. <laughs> Let's hear your translation. Okay. Did you take some notes, Elijah? Yeah. Well, well, let me see your notes. I'm going to check on you this day, so you're going to be normal on my discipline until you seriously get some head of you too, okay? So, so 417, honor your parents and men. Oh, wow. Okay, that's perfect. I like it. <laughs> Short and succinct. There you go. <laughs> yeah. The master said. Good job. Nilaja is uh, is a uh, is different than it appeared. He's not hearing or tending. Actually, here with his heart, you know, it's amazing how he does it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Nilaja. Yeah. So, if I uh, sometimes because of this uh, this kind of uh, unfamiliar with your ways and uh, give a little bit of hard time, on you forgive me for that. Okay, so I just want you to. Take the one is the teaching time, okay? Yeah. No other purpose, so don't feel awkward when I do that, okay? So, you know my intent is not to criticize you, but to improve you, okay? So, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The master said, In serving his parents, a son may remonstrate with them, but gently. When he sees that they do not incline to follow his advice... Let, let me see the word. Let's write that down. Remonstrate? Word. Yeah, can you spell it? Uh, R-E-M... O-N. Can, can I see, look, look? Yeah, let me see. Remstrate. R-E-M-O-M-S-T-R-A-T-E. -E. Make a forceful, reproachful protest. Okay. Mm. Remstrate. Have you heard that word before? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You were to me. Okay. Demonstrate. Remonstrate. Yeah, so, like a remonstration. Yeah. It's, a, okay. it's a form of discipline, I guess. Okay. Make your opinion known, basically. In this way, it's critical. Well, it's critical not so just simply First making opinion. an opinion known, but it's, uh, it's applying it in a, a, I'm, in a I'm, I'm sorry. disciplinary I'm, I'm, way. I'm talking about the roots of the man. Oh, okay. He has a root, demonstrate, remonstrate, empty, is allowed about it. Straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, so, yeah. It's a root yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. When he sees that they do not incline to follow his advice, he shows an increased degree of reverence. I like the word inclined, am I to follow? Yeah. Mm. But does not abandon his purpose. And then his purpose. And should they punish him, he does not allow himself to murmur. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't think it, the original word has a punishment in, included, but you can infer that, am I? So, yeah. Sure. Read again. The master said, in serving his parents, a son may remonstrate with them, but gently. When he sees that they do not incline to follow his advice, he shows an increased degree of reverence, but does not abandon his purpose. Mm. And should they punish him, he does not allow himself to murmur. Mm. The word abandoning the purpose there is a, is a diverse translation. There is... In ours, is basically continue to obey the parents, and right, mm -hmm. rather than deviated from the original purpose. So, okay, yeah. so I don't think that's what implying the original test. So that's mistranslation. There. I'm just talking, okay, mm -hmm. so for my own purpose of uh, understanding. So, four eighteen. So, I start on the book how to translate this book in different versions of English. So, oh, okay. I try to read it. Yeah. So, I don't have the time yet. So, let's see. Look at that. So for eighteen said And that is when your parents are still alive, you should not go to a faraway land. And if you have to, then you God take care of their affairs. That was my saying. So go ahead. The master said, while his parents are alive. The son may go, sorry, while his parents are alive, the son may not go abroad to a distance. If he does go abroad, 
He must have a fixed place to which he goes. Hmm. That word again, Fang, means fixed place. In this translation, yours, mine actually means the proper method. The proper place or proper method. It should be actually, should my translation stand. It means, Fang means a, a, a arrangement, a plan, okay? A settlement. So, evidently speaking about when you go to a faraway land, you want to take care of your parents when you leave, am I? After you left. Make it easy. So, yeah. So what in all this several snippets of conversation are constantly one theme. What are uh, these few themes? It's how to be a good son, yep. right? So yeah. Or good child in the case. Right. Four nineteen contains the theme. That is this one is interesting. Say three years you wanna change the way how your father govern the family or govern his affairs or family affairs, whatever. And that is a true respect. Okay, so. so here, mm -hmm. The master said, if the son for three years does not alter from the way of his father, he may be called filial. Filial, what is the word filial means? They used it before, it means of or do from a son or daughter. Yeah, I guess that's the only. I like the word. Let me let me learn it. This is sorry. Yeah. Oh, filial. Do from, of or do from a son or daughter. Do you know the generation or generations, of the parent of generation. So this is basically due respect, am I right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Do Do you understand the principle behind it? Why three years? If that has some cultural application, I don't, but I do know that uh, the significance of the number three, interestingly, has a lot to do with perfection, doesn't it? Mm, more than that, also relating, especially in national affairs. I mean, if you're a prince, mm -hmm. you suddenly become a king, your father passed away, your affairs, your ways of carrying policy impact the whole nation, right? So if you are a son, respect your parents, what do you do? Respect the, the even maybe not good ways, am I right? So, but you don't want to dishonor your parents. Quickly said, I'm so put up with my father, his ways, his his, his wicked king, his wicked father. Therefore, I overthrew everything, am I right? So, right. Now, you no know leadership is that is not wise in many ways. Okay, so let's think about the biblical example. So, um. After Solomon, what is the king? Solomon's son. Rehoboam. Yeah, what is what Rehoboam did? Did Rehoboam respect his father's policy? His All father, the ways of his own generation. Yeah, his father gave him elders, am I right? Wise counsel. But he has his young people yeah. wrap around, also gave him another counsel. What he did? He chose to honor the parents or violate the parents? Violate. Well, it's uh, his father, I'm sorry, and yeah, the, the council safeguard to him, am I right? So, now, then uh, you would think that happened only uniquely to Rehoboam, which contrasts to Solomon. Solomon did the opposite, am I right? So, Solomon has the help of uh, Zadok, of uh, Nathan, of many other good counsel around David and pass on to him, making sense to you, you know, so. Now, you would think that's a unique occasion, special case. Actually, it's history repeat itself, you know? In many kingdoms, especially in China, in European nations, in British, for example, there's many did that same thing. And especially when you're in a position like a king or a prince, I mean, we that is more identifiable through history because they're, you know, really history wins. But the thing about the family affairs, I mean, think about business uh, contests, or somebody taking a family business, think about the community responsibilities. Amen, hallelujah. And you almost will see when the son or the next leader is supposed to honor the former president, and they totally violate that and make sudden changes, am I? And that is not necessarily in this culture, you see? This culture is a four years terms, so almost the speculatory reverse the policy, you know, challenge the old ways of doing things. 
to make a name for yourself, to make a to make a, a dent on your kind of uh, presidency or your terms, right? So everybody, but that's the right way to do things. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of uh, division, a lot of uh, waste, a lot of uh, goodwill, a lot of uh, strife, a lot. That's a lot of things that is can be, you know, as expensive for maybe in way the corruption, in way the bad thing continue, actually cause maybe more damage to societal stability and the benefit to unify, unifying efforts, right? So I'm just talking, you know, so either way have the bad ways, especially when your son inherited the baggage from a bad father or bad leader, am I right? Am to you? So well, you had to deal with it. But still you don't want to just make a sudden turn through everything of sync, am I right? So making sense to you, you know, so sometimes, however, if things get so bad, you need a dramatic situation, but still, you know, be very, very cautious how you do that, making sense to you, so, now, you would think this kind of things don't happen often, I, I would actually, if you read, read history, I want to have you to learn, one of the key points is to learn transitional period, how a great leader able to take on. There are different leaders. Leaders some um, just open that things up, you know? They construct things, am right? They open, make sense to you, the institute things. The leaders inherit things, keep on things, am right? Keep things going, improve things. Reformation in a sense, am right? So not a revolution, you know, so, or not construction. So you have to see the age of this the state or the landscape, a leader came on board. Making sense to you? So you have to think about how they do things differently. But either way, you can see different leaders handle those things differently. But in the end of the story, uh, a, a leader has to learn to honor where honors do, especially from the past. And be very, very wise in criticizing the thing that he did not really put a lot of effort hard into construct, am I right? So making sense to you? But human tendencies uh, like to construct or return things, to be innovative, be different, and like a real bone, and what have you, divide the whole nation, am I right? So, and uh, lost the heart of the people. 10 tribes fall away, you know, so making sense to you. So, and it is a word foolish, he should know. You know, he was not a young man when he heard the kingdom. He's quite old, actually, you know, so, yeah, just talking, so. Um, so this seemed to be a very simple rule of honoring a father. But again, Confucius' ideals is more than just from personal virtue, am I? Or family relationship. His idea has a whole next impact from a personal way dealing with the things in this situation is a son handling the inherited affairs as a father, but we how he used to handle things. But he was projecting the whole way how uh, a, a government should run, a, a people should, should make changes, you know, making sense to you, so, yeah. Now, because the restraint on the song in this light, if it's honored as a protocol in a sense, on the culture rule, am I right? So making sense to you? Now would a new king do that to the old king, his father? Obviously can't because this 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 rule is applied to a single family as unit, you know? Uh, uh, just a single son and the and the father. But you are king, you should be exemplified this rule, this principle, more excellently, so you certainly will not do that. So in a sense, this kind of education is more than just, okay, let's narrow a particular song or a particular young generation, talking about it, have, have a whole bearing on societal change, and this is our uh, norm, making sense to so, which is deep through Chinese history. The okay, Cape Confucius teaching began to be adopted and honored by the rulers of later days. Okay, so making sense to you? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Let's see 420. And Confucius said, The age of your parents you should absolutely know. One reason is to celebrate it when they get older. And also to worry about it because they quickly it seems, you know, come to the end of the life, basically. So, you need to care about how old you are, basically. What is your translation? <clears throat> Mine says... Do you know that? Did you write anything down? Um, on this one? Okay. Yeah, Let's listen to that. Yeah. 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 The master said, the years of parents may by no means not be kept in the memory, mm. as an occasion at once for joy and for fear. Mm. It's kind so, of a weird way of wording it. Yeah, his, 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 his translation sometimes will be the off. I'm so sorry to say Yeah, I guess that, he's trying so. to stick by the, yeah. the translation of each word itself. Yeah, so it yeah. It's kind of hard. So the, the essence is that you want, it, when to, when your parents are getting older, and mind you a, a, a grew up a son, you want to know how old they are so you can take care of them, right? So when they get older, you know, you want to celebrate it because they continue to live with you, am I? Remain with you and enjoy their life. But they also worry because, you know what? They're getting old, you know? So you, you don't want them to quickly die, you know? So making sense to you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. This is also about evidently on the son to honor and, and serve the parents. I use a particular word, sir, okay, so. Mm -hmm. Now bear in mind, you guys are going to grow up, your parents are going to grow older. Those are the things you have to practice, you know, so you, I don't envision you, whether society provides those institutions or not, your parents go to a, a, a called old people's horses, you know, so, I mean, from this point where you, you want to provide for them, you want to stay with them as long as you can, take care of them, right? So, let's see. So weak and sick and, you know, so, but it, this society, when people get old, in their, they stay in, in, the, in the old people's, what are they called? Care home, care, take 10 years, decades. You understand know, my point? You know, it's not quickly the dying. Why should not have place in your family? They are a treasure in your family. They are, they are beautiful and in your family. You know, so that's my point, you know. So that's to do with how you treat your parents and how you honor them, you know. We don't understand that. We would understand the way we treat parents going to be mirrored by how our children going to treat us. I mean, you think they're getting old? <laughs> If you don't honor your parents, what would you expect your parents to honor you? <laughs> your, your children to honor you? Well, that, that's maybe a self congratulatory attitude. <laughs> so you think you're so unique? <laughs> so cultural in, input in this light, it's, it's generation to generation. You have to adopt some norms, some principles, some ideals, if you will to see how the owner and take care of the old. I think the old is more than because they have needs, but the old people, are they a burden to your life? Or nuance to your life? What's a nuisance to your life? No, they are treasure. There's so much in their life. If your children hunt around, how much they can gain? You, you, you have grandparents, you know how much they can impart to your life, am I? So making sense to you. So you guys need to honor them regardless Whatever dynamic going on, you know. So learn to honor the other, honor your parents as much as you can. In Yun says, "Mind, there are certain things you can't do it." You know, last night I heard this story. There is a uh, the, this is not politics. I'm talking about the culture. Okay, and nothing to do with the politics. I think this hardest and and on these two things. You know, just as I told you, God bring this topic to me last night in very, very hard. I almost didn't sleep because of it. 
And this started with, I didn't read this word, I'm just telling you how God teaches me sometimes, it's interesting, I was watching casual news brought to this place of uh, this daughter of uh, Graham Vani, the mayor of New York, from, uh, from, which right now the lawyer, attorney for President Trump, the daughter basically get on TV, on national TV CNN and said, I wanted to, uh, everybody to vote for Biden, you know, which is the enemy, <laughs> the political enemy, political opposition, whatever the yes. word, of the father of Trump. He basically just very, very bad, uh, have a low opinion about whatever going on with the president and his father circles, you know. He basically, he don't want to talk bad, but he's still saying that's not good, the things going on. Then he make a case, and it's a pretty time why his father doing the opposite, <laughs> trying to prop up the, the president of the election, and she was undermining it. And, and maybe not, and there was a statement that she said, the, the, the interviewer said, hey, what do your father gonna think of what you're doing right now? They said, it's a very fair question to <laughs> ask. And the, the lady said, did you have you talked to your father? No, I didn't talk, but uh, my father know he would be proud of me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm doing what I do. <laughs> I say, are you a lady? Are you crazy? <laughs> you just torn your heart, the father out. If the father has to say, I'm going to honor and cherish what the father, uh, my daughter doing, that's a hypocritic. That's a lie. That's such, that's a, such a lie. <laughs> if the father has to put on that show, he don't know what he's doing. He's not a wise man. His value, his expectation in life, uh, to turn to the beautiful child <laughs> and, and all through, in, in, in <laughs> more than through away, but just through, turn opposite. And they are doing this on different spectrum in the critical time. <laughs> Try it on the national TV to criticize the other's political value. And I'm not saying that you don't have to do it per se. But you expect you have a good relationship with your parents? I mean, <laughs> you expect that is the way how an individual life should express their, uh, you know, my father should be glad I'm doing this, should be, should be, should be, should be feel change something. Are you kidding me? Now you see, the point I'm making is a culture. You see the lawyers of this nation and change intellectual education and personality, individual expression of life, to such a high, it's like idol. You know, because the society, the medium, whatever, the more education, everybody said, you can have an independent voice, I want you to whatever, to be yourself, to have your own beliefs, your own values. But hey, you as a parent has no, <laughs> Agreement with your parent, your child, having an input in your child in the end of the day. I'm not a control. I'm not overriding the individuality for your children. I'm talking about, are you kidding me? How this culture going to continue? What, what is kind of a family this? You, you understand, if this is a norm for American society, the Americans is doomed. I mean, this kind of uh, excellency and uh, expression of a personal value is, is, is become the norm. The American doomed. Why? Because uh, fundamentally there is no respect, no honoring, no heritage to pass on. I hope I'm not speaking to you guys because you're young people. I'm talking about in general culture fabrics, am I? Culture building. Uh, Elijah, you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. Give some comment yourself. Why is this important? Why pick on this case? Um, <clears throat> we were talking about um, just respecting our guardians and our parents and just how people and... Uh, not you guys need to understand not the point of your father your, or me that we don't have flaws, right? So, but I want you guys to carry, I think consciously, a very good template for us to 
as a generation pass on. It's not far away from what? The biblical principles. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, just um just how people today have just decided just to completely forgo respect and honor for parents and just go their own way because they have their right. I feel like people in this day have talk yeah. about their rights and all that yeah. too much. Um but has twisted the minds of people into thinking they can just do whatever they want without yeah. and disrespecting and all. Yeah, I think this father's daughter evidently were civilized, were you know, were polished, you know, in their exter- exteriors. Yeah. You know, they believe what they believe. And it's practiced beautifully. To a certain way it's admirable, you know, so to a certain one it's admirable. But my point is not this particular case, particular characters. My point is more the concern for culture fundamentals. If this become a norm, what do you think the impact of society would be? I'm just trying to draw your thoughts out on this. So, I'm not give you guidance or direction per se. I'm just give you culture evaluation, right? So, yeah, go ahead. Well, just a contentious attitude becomes a normal thing. And then therefore, there's no unity. And as a result, both before, as a, both as a result and as a cause, there's a complete lack of honor, which mm. is, as we know, yeah. the very foundation of the maintenance of a culture. Yeah, yeah. and it's a great loss of American society, I believe. You know, I don't see any other society as you recede so quickly, maybe European nations, Western culture. It's it's just so unbelievable, and its impact over the nations. The other day we were talking about this strange story: a child uh, put uh, the parents into court, <laughs> sued the parents, and said, "Why you burn uh, the game birth to to my life into the world?" Right? A high school student or something like that. So, and the parents all Western lies lawyers, you know, in India. India is a very traditional nation. I mean, traditional culture. But then when the people, lawyer-minded, learn the Western value, think that is how do I going to educate my child to be independent, to be thoughtful, to be, to be, you know, to be able to argue his own case, to be smart with whatever thing. And, and change the here, the interview I remember to interview the parents, they are smiling and almost like have pride in themselves, you know? Oh, we got a child, he can do this, you know? He knows how to sue us. <laughs> to give him birth into the world. I said, I was sort of shaking my head and my heart was so dismayed by the foolish intellectuals of other nations and the borrows and learned from the worst part of Western civilization, Western development. That's the worst part. And you pass that worst part to your parent, to your child, you have no, no, no check on it. That's a foolishness to the core. When that child grew up to be a happy person, <laughs> to be a respect person, to go and have a relationship good with the parents, any human beings out in the, in the outside the world with a little bit of <laughs> iron tower he built up or, you know, castle in the air built up. When that is shattered, what do you think that child is going to be like? His life is totally damaged. He has no grounding and no sense of stability in life. I mean, he's not here, you know. Uh, anyway, I want you to pray, no one, in this regard. I'm a little bit passionate today. I see a great use. You know, I hope with us encouragement and education right now we have, we can recourse our life, rethink our life, remap our life differently. But I'm more talking with, I'm so sorry, I'm talking with a little bit um, academically, whatever. 